Hello my dear friends, I am Dr. Vaishadi Bharande. I am an MBBS, MD, PhD anatomy. I have been teaching anatomy for more than 25 years and I love it. Today let's discuss surgical anatomy of recurrent laryngeal nerve for thyroid gland surgeries. Why so specific? Because we want to protect the recurrent laryngeal nerve in thyroid gland surgeries. Remember if you like the video, then you can find the handouts for this video on my website vbanatomy.com. And if you enjoy the lecture, do remember to like and subscribe to my channel. It will encourage me to create more of these videos for you. So why? Why are we discussing such a niche topic? Because it's critical for surgeons performing thyroid gland surgeries to have an excellent knowledge of anatomy of recurrent laryngeal nerve. They must be able to identify it so that they can prevent damage to it resulting in hoarseness of voice and difficulty in respiration and swallowing. So if we want to protect, to prevent this, then we need to know the RLN, recurrent laryngeal nerve. For that, I want to quickly take, through, take you through its development. Right. So this is early in the development when the aortic arches are getting formed. And you can see how this is the right vagus nerve, left vagus nerve. And the branches of this are arching around the sixth arch and passing upwards. First, these nerves are hooking around sixth arch artery. With time, what happens? So these are the recurrent laryngeal nerves. With time, what happens? The sixth arch artery on the right side disappears. So now the right recurrent laryngeal nerve begins to arch around the fourth arch artery. Okay. With time, what's going to happen? This fourth arch artery develops into the right subclavian. The left recurrent laryngeal continues to wind around the sixth arch artery, which then goes on to form the, this is the right subclavian artery being formed by the fourth arch. Now, the sixth arch artery on the left side forms a ligamentum arteriosum. The left recurrent laryngeal now winds around this an arch of aorta and begins to uh, reaches the tracheoesophageal group. Surgical anatomy of recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is the medial surface here of the thyroid gland. Here the thyroid gland is related to two muscles as we know, cricothyroid inferior constrictor, two tubes, larynx and tra trachea and esophagus and two nerves, external laryngeal nerve and recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, Ident how will you identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve in this spot? Remember that it looks glistening white in color. It's got a blood vessel network on it, making it easy to be identified. On the right side and on the left side, there is a slight difference in their courses. On the right side, it tends to travel from lateral to medial and then slightly forwards. On the left side, once it's entered tracheoesophageal groove, it has an almost vertical course. Let's take a look. This is the right recurrent laryngeal. You can see the right traveling from the lateral to medial side and having an anterior words course. On the left side, it is traveling almost vertically upwards in the tracheoesophageal groove. Alteration in position. So you will find that in case the person is having arterial lusoria, you will find what is called as a non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. What's a non-recurrent laryngeal nerve? This is a nerve that is formed which supplies the, enters the tracheoesophageal groove directly without winding around the subclavian artery. Because in this case, the subclavian artery is actually taking origin from the aorta, winding around trachea, going posterior to it and then coming on the right side. So there is no right subclavian artery in the normal position to wind around. The problem with this position is that this non-recurrent laryngeal nerve can be damaged during ligation of the right superior thyroid artery. You should always be prepared that the normal anatomy can be altered in surgeries. For example, now here you are seeing the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is the spot where you want to access to look at recurrent laryngeal and this is your thyroid gland. But during surgery, 
once the incision is taken, the whole gland lands are getting rotated. So the area is accessed, but the gland is now in a different position. So the whole anatomy can be changed uh, during surgery also. This is a very often, often done maneuver to access recurrent laryngeal as well as parathyroid glands. Now, this is the inferior thyroid artery branch of thyrocervical trunk branch of first part of subclavian. It divides into ascending and descending branches. The ascending branch anastomoses with the posterior descending branch of the superior thyroid artery. At this lower point, the inferior thyroid artery has a close relation with the recurrent laryngeal nerve. When they are close to the gland, they are very close together. But when they are away from the gland, they are away from each other. So the lesson we learn is that if you want to tie the inferior thyroid artery, you tie it away from the gland. If you tie it close to the gland, you will damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The relation of inferior thyroid and recurrent laryngeal, okay, results in inferior, the recurrent laryngeal nerve gets damaged very often. Almost in 14% of thyroid surgeries, it's been known to get damaged. Whereas recovery is seen in only 11 to 12 percent. There is a percentage of people who suffer from permanent damage of recurrent laryngeal nerve in thyroid surgeries. Why does this happen? This is because when you are trying to access inferior thyroid, the recurrent laryngeal is very variably positioned. Sometimes it may be anterior to inferior thyroid. Sometimes it may be posterior to inferior thyroid artery. And sometimes it may be between the inferior thyroid artery. There is also a relation of recurrent laryngeal nerve and lymph nodes. On the right side, the recurrent laryngeal nerve has lymphatic tissue anteriorly and posteriorly. On the left side, it has lymphatic tissue only anteriorly. The surgical importance here is that during central lymph node dissection, the right region is more precarious to dissect because it needs dissection both anteriorly and posteriorly. Ligament of berry can also be a good guide to looking for the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So with this, I have given you a very brief introduction to recurrent laryngeal nerve and its surgical anatomy. If you enjoyed this lecture, do like and subscribe to my channel. It will encourage me to create more of such informative videos. One last bit is the Zucker Kendall tubercle. Zucker Kendall tubercle is present in 70% of the individuals and has got a specific relation to superior thyroid, inferior thyroid, parathyroids, and recurrent laryngeal nerve. It acts as a guide for the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which, along with superior parathyroid, lies posteromedial to the Zucker Kendall tubercle. So, to summarize what did we learn? We learnt about development of recurrent laryngeal, location of recurrent laryngeal in the tracheoesophageal group. Then we talked about surgical approach to recurrent laryngeal, relation of recurrent laryngeal and inferior thyroid artery, relation of recurrent laryngeal and lymph nodes, and finally zucker kendall tubercle. All right, students, I enjoyed taking this very brief class. I hoped it helped you to learn the recurrent laryngeal nerve a little better. Thank you. I'll see you across the screen in some other video.